appreciate you joining us today because today we're going to do a little bit of a tough subject. Mm. We're going to talk about truth, truth, the ugly truth around divorce, mm. right? Now, this is not the show you may be thinking of. This is not, we're, we're not going to beat up on people that have been divorced or getting divorced. Mm. This is a show about <clears throat> how to handle the real estate asset because we're a real estate show mm -hmm. how to handle the real estate asset when you're going through a divorce yeah now most people don't start out that way right they don't start out what way wanting a divorce getting no. married to have a divorce no most don't no and yet it's it's fairly prevalent in the uh, secular world it's about 50 percent mm -hmm. of marriages end in divorce and if it's a second marriage, it's right around 75 to 80% end in a second divorce. Mm -hmm. That's a scary stat. That is a scary stat. Yeah. So we thought, well... And just talking about stats for a minute, okay. I've always heard, and I always found it really interesting, that people in the church have the same divorce rate. I heard that too. And it's not true. So I Googled it. Awesome. I used my friend Google. And, you know, you can't believe everything you read on the Internet, mm -hmm. but it seemed like there were some pretty good stories, uh, stories or stats. stats. That's mm -hmm. what I meant to say. Um, interesting that Catholic couples are 31% less likely to divorce. Now, maybe that's because they annul instead of divorce. I don't mm -hmm. know. Doubt it. But 31% <laughs> less. Protestants are 35% less likely to divorce. Um, and this stat hit me really hard, I, yeah. the next one, which is Jewish is 97% less likely. Yeah. That's huge. That means they almost don't exist, yeah. divorce within Jewish marriages. And maybe it's, it's uh, maybe because Jewish is more culture and it's a family thing steeped with tradition and, and uh, roles for different mm -hmm. people and whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to do a whole research on that. Mm -hmm. But that was an interesting stat to come across. So about 50% of all marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. That's not nice. That's, that's bad stuff. Now, most of the time, when you get married, you start to put down roots, which means generally you buy a house, mm -hmm. you start to accumulate some wealth, mm -hmm. some, some uh, assets. And when you divorce, they say uh, divorce is 50-50, uh, right? Mm. Half and half. And I think it's not. It's usually 20-20 and the other, the other 60 goes to the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not sure if it's the lawyers, but there's definitely a lot of costs. <laughs> there's a lot of costs, yeah. yeah. So today we're going to talk about kind of six things to watch out for or six tips for how to sell a property if you're in the unfortunate place where th there's just no fixing it. You're going to get a divorce, you're going to divide your assets, mm -hmm. and you're probably going to sell the house. So I've got six tips for what to do. And before we get into those six tips, do you think we should maybe introduce ourselves? Well, we could. Um, and I've got experience around, not really experience around divorce, but Almost getting divorced. Does that mm. mean you experienced that divorce or no. experienced at keeping it together? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with so that. So I'm experienced at keeping it together because the first uh, nine years of my marriage were horrible, mm. according to my wife. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit igno ignorantly bliss. I knew we had some issues, but I didn't think we were going on the divorce path. Yeah. She knew we were on the path to divorce. Well, they say that if uh, you rate your marriage at let's out of ten, let's say a seven. Mm -hmm. That the woman is usually two to three points lower than that. That's typical, yeah. Typical. Mm -hmm. And so if you're sitting out there going, yeah, my marriage is a 10, well, it's probably a 7. <laughs> and if you're thinking, you know, if it's you're a, a man, 5. If, if you're a man, man, if you're a man, sorry. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you're thinking a 5, well, it's time to get to work and look at that marriage. Mm -hmm. And what we actually started doing was we were learning uh, communication styles and uh, male-female differences. We learned about how love languages, we learned about love and respect, took all kinds of courses because when you actually work on your marriage, they get better. Imagine that, typically. Mm, typically. And uh, we did this 
we go on vacation once a year in the in the winter time and we took a book with us and it was the marriage checkup mm. and it had like 64 questions that you asked and you ranked it between 1 and 10 and Yetta would do the same thing 1 to 10 we still didn't introduce ourselves by the way but most people know who we are but I'm going to tell them in a minute um, and then we looked at that year after year and see if our marriage was getting better mm -hmm. and what was interesting even when we got to an 8 or a 9 which we thought oh that's fantastic in a couple years with growth that 8 or 9 was now our new 7 yep. and the 8 or 9 was way better in a few years but you never really hit 10 because 10 says there's no room for improvement and in my house that's the biggest room yeah yeah the room for improvement I like that yeah so you're Ryan Decker I'm Ryan I'm Ken Decker you're my son you're my dad some people think you're my brother because they hear us <laughs> on, on the radio or on on the telephone they go you guys sound just alike or the, many of them say that you sound like me yeah and others say that I sound like you and I said well I can't sound like him because I came first so he That's has true. to sound like me unless they met me first okay I guess so there you go there you go that's a different perspective it's all about perspective it sure is. so today we're talking about the perspective of getting a divorce and what to do with your real estate assets mm -hmm. so number one if you've got children and there's smaller children that are staying with one of you or, or split custody or whatever if one person can keep the house the home the one that you the kids are growing up in that's the best don't yeah. sell it at all it'll add a little stability yeah stability and normality mm. for those children because when the children are, are what, what would they say they're they're again typically they're the ones that take the brunt of a divorce emotionally because they're, they're raw and they're fresh they're little and they're little yeah they think they caused it sometimes yeah and they they don't fully understand why mom and dad aren't going to live together anymore and if they can have the normality of having the house that they've always gone home to mm -hmm. because it's super stressful a divorce for the for the parents it's super stressful for the kids but then add a move on top of that mm -hmm. it's a lot more stress so if one of you can keep the house and buy the other one out there's two reasons that's good one is uh, for the children the other is you save all those expenses you don't pay off your mortgage you don't uh, pay a realtor when you, you say pay, pay off transfer. your mortgage you mean when you do close you your don't mortgage discharge it. you're gonna have to pay fees for that yeah for discharging yeah right that's what I meant mm -hmm. uh, pay it off early yes because you sell your property um, all of those things you can save those fees now it's important to know like some people will say I've had people come to me and go well, we're looking at a divorce one of us would like to stay in can you give us a value on the property and if it's amicable that's a hard word to say how do you it say is. that word I'm not trying it <laughs> <laughs> if it's Nicable. amicable then we can come in and give you a value on the house mm -hmm. if it's going to go to court or in the yeah. lawyer process then you're going to need a formal appraisal and I would actually get one or two maybe even three appraisals I know that sounds high but then there's no room for um, feeling like hey this isn't fair no you got three it's not you know her appraiser his appraiser it's we got three appraisers and they're all saying the same thing yeah or two and then if there's too big a difference get a third yeah yep and then so you settle on a price and then make sure you know it's not 50 50 it's now okay because if we sold the property we would have had to pay all these fees yeah. so when you go to buy out you take the fees and everything off at least half of them at least half mm -hmm. and then buy out the difference yeah does that make sense yeah so the number two is hire a professional realtor mm. there's a huge stress in, in divorcing yeah and and do you make great decisions when you're stressed no generally not no you make emotional decisions mm -hmm. which are not generally good so a professional realtor is going to say subjective yep. or objective sorry objective yep 
because <laughs> they're not subject to the, the stresses of your divorce mm-hmm. and the emotions of maybe there's fighting or whatever. Um, and selling yourself adds a lot of stress. It it's difficult in the best of times. Never mind trying to do it while you're going through that other transition. You may be mm-hmm. fighting around keeping the house clean. One person may not be there anymore. They may be there. Mm-hmm. All kinds of things that it's just good to have a third party to negotiate those things with you. Absolutely. Yeah. So then, yeah, it's a neutral party. And so if you're selecting a neutral party, mm-hmm. it's important because if one, let's say the male has a friend that's a realtor and it's their friend, yeah. then the other spouse is going to feel like it can feel can yeah, feel could yeah could feel that that person's looking after them or they're only communicating with them they're not communicating with the mm-hmm. other party and it can create all kinds of stuff so we like to say either get someone that both of you know and trust mm-hmm. or get someone that neither one of you know but both trust but both trust yeah and then what I've seen sometimes too, um, at least when I was younger, is you would take, let's say, the husband and mom would take the wife and you'd be able to deal with them. Yeah, it makes it a little way. easier when you're, yeah. when you're a that, team. And that's in pretty extreme cases. But, mm-hmm. you know, that whole element of, you know, trying to keep it cohesive and yet some separation just for... Yeah. Like we had friends, we had personal friends that went mm-hmm. through a, a divorce several years back. And... They chose <clears throat> to use Yetta and I because we were friends of both of them yeah. for a long time. And they said, well, we're going through this. You know we're going through it. Let's have you because you are already a realtor to start with. So let's use you to sell the house. And subsequently, they both purchased homes mm-hmm. through us independently. So, you know, for a realtor, <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say. But there's business in, in divorce. There is. And yet it's it's not fun business, mm-hmm. and yet we're professional. We've done many divorce situations, mm-hmm. and we're good at communicating yeah. and staying objective and handling the process for you so that, you know, there's no shame. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no mm-hmm. nothing from us. We're, we're business people. We treat it as a business transaction, yeah. and that's actually point number three is for the people that are getting a divorce, selling a house is a business transaction, Mm -hmm. right? And it's no longer a home. You've made that decision. You've broken up Mm -hmm. or you're breaking up. You've broken up. It's no longer a home. It's a business decision to sell an asset and move on with our lives. Mm -hmm. And so treat it like like that. Yeah. Or if you're keeping it, you're keeping it for the kids to keep their home intact. Yeah. And that's and if there's one thing I've found is in the many people, divorced people that I've met or people that are going through a divorce, most of them, almost all of them, they want the best for the children. Mm-hmm. They get it that they, they're not getting along, mm-hmm. but they still want the best out of the situation for the children that's possible. Yeah. Most people have a heart for their children. Yeah. So having a plan. This is where a realtor comes in, talking with you. Sometimes we even talk separately. You know, we're not, they're not in the same room. They don't want to be in the same room. So we we actually communicate with one spouse and then we communicate with the other spouse. Mm -hmm. And we kind of act like mediators to come up with a pricing plan. And I think it's really important that you have a pricing plan up front. Mm -hmm. Know where the money's going. Know uh, what you want to price it at know when you want to make price reductions if it's not selling because sometimes one spouse is in the house and they're liking it Mm -hmm. and the other spouse is paying for it and they don't want it to sell quickly Mm -hmm. so they they maybe keep it messy or they um, you know don't allow showings or, or whatever so it can be a stressful time for the realtor too and we negotiate or navigate all of that stuff and then have a plan that the price is going to adjust at regular intervals. Mm-hmm. And make it ahead of time that that's a percentage, mm-hmm. right? Yep. What would be a good percentage? 
Ah, uh, well, it depends on the price of the home. So, like, if it's only a hundred thousand dollar property out in the sticks, mm -hmm. you know, one percent isn't nearly big enough. Right. So I would generally the minimum I want to reduce a home is five to ten grand. Anything less doesn't have any impact. Okay. So I, I like to say, you know, have a percentage, whether it's three or five or seven or whatever, yeah. probably five is a pretty good number. Because even if it's a hundred thousand, five is five thousand. Mm -hmm. If it's four hundred thousand, that's a twenty thousand dollar drop. Mm -hmm. That's a significant drop. Well, if it's a million dollar property. Yeah, it's fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Which is pretty typical in yeah. that in that price range. So yeah. you know, if you have a plan that at thirty days or forty five days we're gonna reduce the price by five percent. And then if it still doesn't sell in another 45 days, we're going to reduce another 5%. And then also prearrange what your bottom line is. If your bottom line is a percentage of the asking price. Mm -hmm. So that sets you up for not having disagreements around do we accept this offer or not. Yeah. If it's said, you know, we'll accept anything, say, within 3% of asking price, well, now you've got that predetermined, and when it comes to offer time, which can be a little bit stressful, you know that if you can get it within 3%, you've both already agreed you're going to accept it. Mm -hmm. And then that number works well because as your percentage drop, then your 3% just stays there, mm. right, as your price goes down. So that kind of thing can make a huge difference. Yeah. And number five is a tough one. Number five. Yeah. And this has so much impact. Mm -hmm. It's massive. I've seen homes sell for hundreds of thousands less than they should have because of this point. Really? Yeah. So what, what caused them to sell so less? Um, it has to do with the happiness in the home. Or it's, it's almost yeah. an energy. You can feel it like is. The spirit, the spirit of the people in the home mm -hmm. affect the property and mm -hmm. others walking in. Well, and, and then also there's sometimes clues, like a smashed door or, um, you know, half a closet filled and the other half empty. Um, there's things that people pick up on subconsciously and it just starts to wear them down as they're going right. through the home. Marks in the carpet where right. furniture used to be because the house has been divided. Yep. It just... So there's ways of, there's ways of fixing that bring in a few a little extra furniture you can uh, ask one of your whoever's leaving the house the spouse to leave their off-season clothes in the closet and pick mm -hmm. it up once the house sells or mm -hmm. or borrow a friend's off-season clothes whatever just to make it look like a house and home. feel like a house. yeah put some fresh flowers in mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, turn on the lights open the blinds because um, often when people are going through a divorce, they tend to close in and, you know, turn things off, close the blinds, make it dark. Um, and so be very proactive with making it a bright, happy home. And um, because we're on a Christian radio station, I can say this. Often <laughs> when I go in that list a home or I'm in a home that's a divorce, um, I often pray over it. And just ask for, you know, good energy to be brought in and that God's presence would be here. And if there's anything negative, it would be removed. Um, and I've noticed over the years that there is an impact in praying over a home. So if you're going through a divorce or if you know someone who is, um, you know, go pray. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, another thing I just thought of was let your realtor know. Yeah. They feel the energy. You know, a lot of times people try, okay, we're going to put on a, a happy face. We're going to say we're selling our house. We're not going to tell our realtor why we're selling, mm. that it's actually a divorce. Um, generally, we feel it. And yet, we can't guide effectively if we don't know the truth. Yeah. And so, if you're open with us, that doesn't mean, like, I think people think they're going to get less for their house because... They tell their realtor that they're getting divorced. But if anything, we can get you more for your house if you tell us. If you don't tell us, then we're not necessarily covering for where we need to. Mm -hmm. And there's times where it's, um, you know, I, I just recently working with a lady, lovely lady, and it's court ordered the sale of the house because it got that far down the line. And I've done a number of them that are court ordered so that 
you know, one spouse signs and the other one has to go through the lawyers and they're, they're forced to sign the, the sale and is really not happy. And yet this person had such a great attitude and they said, it's a business. It's just business. I said, oh, that's really tough, you know, and that it's going through the court and whatever. And she goes, nope, it's just business right now. It's So she's finished with the the, the sadness of the breakup of the family mm-hmm. and now it's just business to clean up the assets and mm-hmm. divide and move yeah. on. And I mean one of the mistakes people can make is hanging on to the house. I don't know if it's subconscious trying to keep things together um, but hanging on to it can cause you not to be able to move on or cause you know the value to go on down because it's been on the market for you know two years. Um, there's all sorts of things that can draw it down. So once you've decided, it's best if you move forward with full force. Mm-hmm. All right. And then understanding what it'll cost and what you're going to do with the money. It's what it costs to sell a property. You, you know, you've got, you both have moving costs. Mm-hmm. You're going to have the, the cost of the legal fees for the actual sale of the property. Those are generally minor in comparison mm-hmm. to the, the, the separation costs and the, mm-hmm. the divorce costs. Uh, understanding um, where the money will go. So if there's uh, net equity in the house and you have fifty or hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in there, where's the money go? Does it just go a hundred thousand, or do we divide it and we pay off bills that we use to buy furniture for the house, mm-hmm. or or to maintain the house, or repair the house, or upgrade the house? Let's pay all those bills off and then we're going to divide the money. Or maybe way. someone wants a cottage and it's not worth as much as the house. And so you keep, you know, 150 and they get 50 and the cottage. There's all sorts of elements. Yeah. And I think having those things set out in advance mm-hmm. before you actually sell is huge. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It takes a lot of that stress and guessing away. Mm-hmm. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you're going to go buy a house, you have to have your settlement signed for, for the most part. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people will sell a house because of the divorce. They're in a separation mode or whatever. They divide the asset. Then they both want to go buy a house, but they may not qualify because the separation agreement isn't agreed to and signed yet. Mm-hmm. So you can't get a mortgage because they don't want to approve you because they don't know, you know whether you're going to have to pay support child support or alimony or whatever spousal support and i've seen it go both ways now where you know the the female spouse is making way more money than the male spouse Mm -hmm. and they have to pay support and so it's it's interesting but get that done before you sell is the best and and usually that's the hardest thing for people to sign Mm -hmm. because there's disagreements on Mm -hmm. custody of children or on, on yeah. how they're going to split up the assets. And there's sometimes really interesting things in them, like you can only live 15 minutes a drive from my house, or um, so the settlements aren't always just about money. Or you money. can't live within 15 yeah, minutes of my house. Well, the one I'm thinking of is you had to. <laughs> okay. And so when I was helping this individual buy, we had to map around the house and say, okay, where, where can you buy? And that was for children? Mm-hmm. For support of the children, right. so the children can go to the same school and ease yep. of ease of custody and yep. all that kind of thing. And that the parents would still have both, or sorry, the kids would have both parents in their lives. Nice. I've even heard of some people go out and they buy a second property, like a you know you got to be still pretty flexible and and uh, positive about your spouse, even though you're divorcing. Mm-hmm. Mature, I would even say, is they'll they'll rent a uh, an apartment or a condo or they buy a mm-hmm. condo or something and the kids and the one spouse stay in the house yeah. one week and then that spouse goes to the condo and the other spouse moves back into the house for one week mm-hmm. so the kids aren't being shuttled back and forth the parents do the shuttling back and forth and that's very stabilizing mm. compared to the other so that was pretty pretty that's neat interesting. Yeah, it, I wonder how that would play out over time, like after well, a year or two. You just see the <laughs> the problem possibilities, right? Yeah. It's, oh, you didn't leave the condo clean, or you didn't leave the yeah. house clean, or you know, whatever. It could or be a found nightmare. Such and such in your house. What are you doing? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of things, and 
Um, so we would just want to support you in this. If this is one of the things you're going through, we want to make sure that, you know, you understand that the Decker team has experience working with people that are going through a divorce yeah. and that need special care and special instruction mm-hmm. on how to get... And special support. Yeah. yeah. Special care. Yeah. That's support. And support. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you can say and support. And the best thing of all is <clears throat> don't, you know, the best thing is to, is to stop it before. It's, right. You know. And so I'm going to throw this plug. If you're in a phase where, you know, this may be an option for you or maybe your marriage is strong but you're having a lot of fighting, we have tons of resources that we've used for our own marriages as well as helped many other people with theirs. And so if you need those resources, please reach out. We want to mm-hmm. set you up with those. Or we can connect you with people that can yeah that do this full time can help yeah mm-hmm. can help a lot yeah so ooh, a little bit heavy <laughs> a little bit heavy show today very heavy <clears throat> let's let's end it on a high okay I've had cases where people have come and said we're going to sell because we're getting divorced and <clears throat> one of the questions I said well would you would you not do it if, if you could put the marriage together, would you not sell your house? And they've said yes. And we've worked at that. We've mm-hmm. sat down with them. We've counseled with them. I don't like the word counseled. We've kind of just shared our journey. We've peered with them. Peered with them. I like that word. Yeah. And we, you know, so we share where we've been. They see hope in where we've come, mm-hmm. you know, through Christ and, and through our journey of learning. Um, how to be a better husband, how to be a better wife, and and how to communicate with one another, uh, how to fight fair, how to have rules and boundaries that both agree on, and you know, it just how to get closure. Yeah. How so to move we, forward. We'd yeah. love to see someone a marriage restored rather than you know make a few thousand dollars on the sale of a house because mm-hmm. of a divorce. That's that's really not where our heart is. And if, you know, for whatever reason, whether it be abuse or, or whatever, you've said, no, this, this just cannot continue. It cannot, mm-hmm. it, the marriage is over. It's done. Well, then we'd like to be your realtor because we're experienced in helping those mm-hmm. that are going through that transition. And <clears throat> we can help you both on the buy and the sell side. Absolutely. And get a fresh start and, you know, that's what life's about is fresh starts with mm-hmm. you know that's what Jesus was about he said okay you be baptized and and yeah. born again so it's, actually I have a we don't have much time but I have this story from a few weeks ago I was working with a client and um, she was going through a separation and we got the agreement accepted on the other side and then um, it was conditional and the day before the conditions were met she said Ryan hate to do this to you, but I, I think I'm going to stick with them. Nice. So we tore everything up <laughs> and, and, you know, the marriage is still going. And so, you know, I'm praying for her and hoping that they can keep this together. And, you know, that stuff happens and that's okay too. That's fantastic that's when that happens. Great story. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been an interesting, wonderful time we've spent with you. Thanks for joining us. Join, joining us on the journey.